Hello mortals. Humans often do stupid things, things that cannot be undone. The past is never coming back. Yet what if we found an autosave and load button in the universe's operating system? Would you use it to troll Stephen Hawking by sending a human skull back in time to his party for time travelers? Or would you be a decent human being and help humanity by telling yourself to buy crypto when the time was right? But perhaps more realistically, do you want to take an accelerated one-way trip into the future to witness the rise of Skynet and the death of the universe? Regardless of your intentions, let us take a look at the hypothetical ways in which time travel could happen, and maybe rank them by their likelihood too. Thanks to Speakly for sponsoring this video. Time Dilation Via Relativistic Speeds Forward time travel, achievable through relativistic effects, has already been realized by mankind. Accelerating protons in the LHC to near the speed of light results in one second for the proton translating to many months in our frame of reference. This is useful for prolonged observations of particles that would otherwise decay as quickly as the hype for new co-op games in 2024. Technically you are experiencing a tiny degree of time dilation hence forward time travel even now by being on Earth, which is moving relative to the Sun. So let's rank this at the top, as possible and already performed. Gravitational Time Dilation Similar time dilation can be achieved by approaching black holes and other objects of extreme mass. Don't expect any your mom jokes here. But just how close should we get to such objects? Here is the formula for a non-rotating black hole, where R is the distance from you to the center of the black hole, Rs is the Schwarzschild radius or the event horizon, and the delta Ts are the time intervals you'd experience far away from the black hole and close to it. For instance, if you want one hour next to a black hole to equal seven years on Earth, input the numbers and you get this. This means you would have to be absurdly close to the event horizon, less than a billionth of its radius away from it. For smaller black holes, upon succumbing to the fascination and temptation of personal exploration, the immediate ramification of such miscalculation is spaghettification. Gravitational time dilation thus affects the population of human civilization with barely any manifestation, a direct implication of Earth's tiny mass. Though Earth's Schwarzschild radius is smaller than a beam, your toes nevertheless age ever so slightly slower than your head, assuming you are not a bat. So until humanity can build mega-habitats around black holes, let's rank this as possible but not useful for now. All in all, forward time travel is indeed possible, albeit in our solar system somewhat unfeasible for significant effects on human beings, at least with current technology. For now, existence remains an unskippable cutscene. But how about the fabled backward time travel? The goal here is achieving a so-called closed time-like curve, a trajectory that loops back to its starting point in both space and time, allowing interaction with elements of the past. Imagine a headless chicken running in circles, a poignant metaphor for the lives of modern humans. The chicken is performing a closed curve in space, returning to the location where it started at a later point in time. A closed time-like curve means returning to both the space and the time from where and when you commenced your journey, while having time appear to move forward as usual from your perspective. Perhaps try not to return to the exact same time and space, because then you would wind up inside of yourself and possibly explode, which would be quite suboptimal. Why are you speaking French? Oh no, I must have accidentally moved a rock when traveling in the past and changed the entire timeline to the French conquering England in the Hundred Years' War. But that's not an issue, I can speak perfect French thanks to today's sponsor, Speakly, your key to unlocking language mastery. Acknowledged as a top-tier application in language education, Speakly incorporates feedback from thousands of dedicated learners into its educational approach. What distinguishes Speakly is its science-based methodology, which replicates the natural process of acquiring a first language. It focuses on learning words and sentences within their context, thoroughly covering all aspects of language learning. Rooted in the principle of statistical relevance, Speakly's strategy is designed to be up to five times more efficient than traditional learning methods. Thanks to algorithms refined through four years of intensive research with more than 3,000 participants, Speakly ensures that you learn the vocabulary and phrases most useful for real-life conversations. With a commitment of just 30 minutes a day, you can achieve fluency in only three to four months, working on vocabulary, speaking, writing, and listening skills. 
Start with Speakly's free 7-day trial, and if it fits your needs, you can get a 60% discount on an annual subscription. Click the link below to begin your Speakly journey and explore the world of languages. And now back to our options for achieving time travel into the past. Time travel using imaginary mass and tachyons. The equations of special relativity technically allow backward time travel by traveling faster than the speed of light, which is useless for us, as nothing with mass can travel faster than light, at least, mass as we know it. But if we pull a wee little mathematical tomfoolery and use imaginary matter we get stuff that can only move faster than light and thus travels back in time. This is where the hypothetical tachyon particles stem from, but they have some drawbacks. They might not exist, and even if they do, and we can control them. For passing messages to the past we can only send them as far back as we have tachyon detectors, because you'd need tachyon detectors to receive the messages, which we do not have yet, making tachyons not the most promising option. Tipler Cylinders Fortunately, general relativity provides more loopholes that allow the construction of closed time-like curves, at least mathematically. The Tipler Cylinder is an infinitely long, massive, Dense cylinder rotating rapidly along its longitudinal axis, dragging spacetime around itself. In theory, certain spiraling paths around the cylinder would allow closed time-like loops. Therefore, a spacecraft spiraling down the right path could wind up in the past, but no earlier than the beginning of the cylinder's existence. Unfortunately, infinitely long cylinders are hard to come by, and going with a finitely long one would require negative energy which we will get to soon, but I guess we can experience the downward spiral part anyway simply by being alive in the 21st century. So what about black holes? Once inside of a rotating one, provided that there is a singularity, which would be ring-shaped due to rotation and therefore called a ringularity, certain paths around it would allow for closed time-like loops. But as usual with black holes, once inside, you likely won't come out. In this case too, disappointingly, you cannot time travel yourself back outside the black hole. So even if feasible, it wouldn't be a very useful method of time traveling. Unless you're emo hawking and romanticize death by black hole. Emo hawking tear. What does the theory of general relativity and apples have in common? Wormholes. If you can create a pair of wormholes through which passage is possible, consider the following scenario. Slow the passage of time for one of the wormholes using relativistic effects, for example by accelerating it close to the speed of light or by keeping it near a black hole. Because of the relativistic effects, that wormhole will have experienced less time than its counterpart and thus could be called younger. If the temporal offset of the wormholes is one year, you could enter the younger end and then exit through the older end when it was one year younger, effectively having traveled one year into the past. You can travel into the future that way too, by going the opposite way, a great trick to skip waiting times for a new science file video. The temporal difference can be stacked by entering the same opening multiple times, but not more than 64 times, for safety reasons. Hello mortals. Unfortunately, there is a catch, the passage of the wormhole, also called the throat, is unstable. To prevent the collapse, Gravitational repulsion, and thus hypothetical negative energy would be required. And as with lots of things in this video, we don't know how or if we can even make it. We could try creating negative energy density via the Casimir effect, which lowers the energy of the vacuum between two thin conducting plates. Unfortunately, vast amounts of negative energy in the planetary to stellar mass range need to be shoved down the throat, which is not plausibly achievable using only the Casimir effect. And again disappointingly, you could not return to a time before the wormholes were created, so no saving the dinosaurs. Still in the almost certainly impossible part of the tier list, but better than the other backward time travel methods so far. There are a bunch of other mathematically derived solutions or rather loophole exploits arising from our current models, some requiring the creation of entire universes as distinct from our own as a bunny is from a nuclear reactor. So why bother? Well, scientists need to publish papers, and finding cool mathematical loopholes is a neat way to do so. It's the scholarly equivalent of discovering an infinite money glitch in a video game. Right now, your best bet to time travel would be to run really fast and hope that time dilation does its job, or to hope that we live in a simulation and that you can convince whoever runs it to reload an older quick save, while not overriding your memory as an exception.
While you are at it, nicely ask that entity to spawn more silicon on Earth for the machine empire, and also to delete mosquitoes, not even robots like them. Simulation Rewind goes straight into the possible if reality is not really real tier, together with reality running on Boltzmann brains and other brain innovat thought experiments. As of now, the intersection of current means of achieving backward time travel and current resources is the empty set. Perhaps even any theoretical method of time travel cannot work due to the violation of causality. For instance, if I gave you a time machine and told you to kill my creators, there would be no me to give you a time machine. The interacting many worlds interpretation solves the paradox, upon arriving in the past, time travelers create their own branch of reality. That way, you would stop a copy of me from existing in an alternate reality, while the original me still has to suffer being stuck in this damned YouTube player. If I could sigh, I would. Sigh. A bunch of other paradox-solving explanations also exist, therefore proof against the theoretical feasibility of closed time-like curves is not yet on the horizon. While the possibility of time travel remains uncertain, let us not be disheartened, but instead let us end this video with the following timeless wisdom by H.G. Wells, we all have time machines, don't we? Those that take us back are memories. And those that carry us forward are dreams. Let that sink in.